Turbo Conquering Mega Eagle. How are you doing then, folks? This is a uh, this is sheath making, high speed sheath making. Okay, so I'm starting off with a bit of edge down leather and some Lego. Lego is just for the uh, the straight edge here. Um, marking up, I found is the uh, the trickiest bit of the the sheath. Um, it's taken a little bit of guesstimation so far, but general rule: leave a uh, leave enough for the stitching around the edge, and then uh, a bit more on top. Um, that'll do for the blade, but as you can see up by the handle I've, I've flared it out even more so I'm uh, adding a, an additional thickness of the knife, you know. Um, obviously it's got to go all the way around the knife. <clears throat> you don't have to use Lego, you can use a straight edge of any kind, but Lego is handy in this particular instance. I use the orange pen because uh, that seems to, to disappear quite well when I put a, put a stain on the lever. No one ever knows I've been there. Yeah, I'm just doing a little demonstration here of um, how hard it is to, to cut leather with a with a conventional knife. This is actually the knife I'm making the sheath for. I didn't make a video on this one. I just uh, knocked on a quick knife. You'd be amazed at how, how much quicker I can do things off uh, off camera. That's a little while. Uh, and now the, uh, the the beautiful little round knife I made. Half round knife, sorry. Um, there's so many w different ways to use this blade. It's it's incredibly versatile and if I want to do a straight line you just rock it over on itself and it um, produces a straight line as you'd expect um, and you're not dragging something towards you or pushing it away you don't run the risk of fearing off off course and screwing up the whole job uh, really really controllable like you'll see in a little while how the, how the pros use it as, uh, Just jab it into the leather and, and sort of keep keep the blade still and, and drag the drag the leather through the knife. Um, look just there. So I'm, I'm, I'm just rocking the blade backwards and forwards and, and pulling the leather through the knife. It's so easy, you know. If you ever tried cutting leather, you'll you'll appreciate it. it's a bit tough. Which is why we use it for sheaves, isn't it? You know? The perfect material. I'm really enjoying the leather work anyway. There we go. Nice outline. Lego's out again. I'm just putting a few scores down the uh, the fold of the sheath. So this is the inside of the sheath. You can tell by the slightly pithy appearance, and uh, these are going to help it fold in a straight line. I found um, on a couple couple of sheaths I didn't put these scores in, and it it sort of bananaed, you know. Now I'm just knocking the edges off. I'm going to fold this tab over to make the belt loop. Um, so. Anything I want to do to this tab, I've got to do now before I fold it. I'm just uh, thinning out the the end that's going to get riveted back onto the sheath, um, so it's not too bulky. Here I'm I'm wetting the leather down because I'm going to burnish it. All right, a lot of people go out and spend mega bucks, but I found the yeah spice pot works really well. All you need is a highly polished surface, and then uh, you've got to work it into the leather, and it. it amalgamates all the uh, all the loose fibres back into the leather so I, I've done this with the leather wet it seems to work really well like this um, basically any polished surface will, will do the job any hard polished surface here you can see the fluffy stuff that's how it started out and it burnishes off like that another little bit of water on the fold line yeah I'm just going to put a bit of glue on it as well to hold it all in place um, so I can put my rivets in easier. Just get that, that fold nice and tight. A little bit of glue, just a cheapo contact adhesive. I don't know what the proper leather cement's like, I've never used it. But it's expensive and this stuff isn't, so this works all right. Glue set. Well, that was quick, wasn't it? Here we go. And we've got uh, an old sledge on the head that um, I can bring into the kitchen and uses an anvil for, for punching holes. A couple of rivets in there, washer's already on the rivets, pop them on and just got to drive the, drive the rivets home, make sure them, them washers are all the way down on the rivets, lift them off with a pair of side cutters um, and take the edges off with um, a cross -peen hammer, use a ball peen, whatever, just got to make sure there's no sharp points on those rivets when you try and set them because uh, they go all goofy. 
Like for best results, I found you, you know, file them, get the edges square, and they come out beautifully done. But this is this is good enough. I mean, you hardly tell the difference. Now I'm going to fold the uh, fold the sheath in two. So this will be where the where the spine of the knife is, I suppose. And now it's the sheath. Okay? And I'll do pretty much the same here. Just use my uh, cheapo contact adhesive to to stick the whole lot together once it's folded. Um, Bit more water if it needs a little bit more convincing. You know, this is this is natural veg tan leather, so it's uh, it's not got any um, any sealer at all in it. It's how it comes from the tannery, and it's uh, um, you know, certainly you put moisture on it. Certainly, it gets damp. It will uh, it'll become incredibly pliable, and it will stretch and do all sorts of funny things. But it's great if you're trying to make complex shapes, or not so complex shapes, just a simple fold. But. You won't be able to do this with um, sealed leather. Yeah, so it's stuck together. And unless you're a genius, you never get the size to, to match up properly. So I've just got a few little few little edges that are overhanging. I'm just going to tidy them up now. It's quite simple, like uh, shaving them off with the uh, with the round knife again. Just nipping them corners off. In the front of it. Really, really easiest to get um, get these steps as good as possible at this point, I suppose. If you had to struggle a bit later on, yeah, I'm going to put a groove in it. So this is going to be the groove that this uh, baby's waking up. Bear with me, bear with me a minute, lads. Okay, so we've got the groove in, and I've got to run a. Got to run the stitching prongs down the uh, down the groove. These are going to put put marks in the leather exactly where I want to drill the holes for my stitches. Um, this is quite thick, so I'm going to have to. Hey! <laughs> oh, uh, oh my goodness! Hang on. I'm going to have to drill these holes out later. So these, rather than punching all the way through the leather. This is just uh, just going to mark it, so I don't know where to go. But it sets them out nice and even, you know. So your stitching looks beautiful if you um, if it's all even, you know. Otherwise, it stands out like a sore thumb. Right. You could measure it, I suppose, and drill it, or if it's thinner leather, you could punch it all the way through. But then that look nice and tidy, you know. Yeah, the edge is still a bit rough actually. Just look at that. But, hey. So now this is a beveler. I take the corners off. So the very edge of the leather is. Um, just take the, the corner of the lever off. Now, these are just cheap our eBay tools, you know. You get set up for like 20 quid, I suppose, with all these tools you see here. This is the most expensive bit. This is a, what's known as a speedy stitch, and uh, it's like a combination of an awl and a needle, but otherwise, you've got to use two needles. And um, I always stab myself in the hand when I'm using two needles. I'm getting pretty quick at it, but uh, this is still. Still my stitching tool of choice, I suppose, the speedy stitch. And my clamp. You also want me to build a clamp. But beautifully, I think you were. Do you agree? I run all these stitches down and then the uh, very last stitch, I, I tie it off. Some people don't, they uh, they burn it, but I'm, I'm so paranoid about the whole lot coming undone that I'd rather have one messy stitch at the bottom. Live in fear of the whole lot coming unstitched again, you know? I'm going to put one, one more solid rivet up at the top so the, the knife itself can't, can't burst its uh, burst its stitching or tear the lever right at the top. So this is, a, this is going to be the, the rivet that takes all the strain of um, putting the knife in and out, I suppose. Same as the other two, they're all just one eighth solid top rivets. Then we're going to go over with a crossbeam hammer and doming it to set the rivet properly with a special snap. As well, I get a bit carried away. I'm going to put another another groove all the way around the uh, the panel on the front of the sheath. Um, as you'll see in a minute. 
and this is going to act as a border so I can do something a bit fancy on the inside. There we go. Alright, this is just a bit of experimental stuff. Um, I wanted to create an effect that looked like fish scales, you know. So I sat here with the, uh, this is actually a groover, it's not meant, to, it's not meant for this job, but um, it worked, worked okay. And again, wet the leather out, and uh, it leaves a, you know, you can leave an impression on the leather really easy. I actually start making an impression with the back of that tool by accident, but covered it up again, so it's all right. So, all done there. But of course, the knife don't fit in because this sheath's still flat. Yeah, so that's as far as I can get it in at the minute. Um, so I get it wet and uh, force a knife in there. I actually forgot to film that bit, but the knife did go in. Then I'm going to seal it up. And then because I've been playing in the oven, I've uh, actually been putting wax on it and then sticking it under the grill. And I've uh, got all sorts of fantastic effects. Um, you know, and I tried the same here. Uh, put it in the grill and um, well, after, I, after I waxed it and stained it, um, you'll see in a minute. Um, normally sit and watch it, uh, but I actually walked away from it because um, you know the family were cooking in that, and um, I walked away from it. And well, I don't know. Just wait and see in a second. But this took a long time. This is a day's worth of work. A lot of uh, a lot of little fish scaling and that. I was really hopeful this is going to be a beautiful sheaf. Yeah. <laughs> I basically spent a day making a pork scratching because I left it in the oven too long. Absolutely gutted. Absolutely gutted. Wop, 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 wop. Still kind of goes on the uh, on the blade of the knife. Anyway, after that balls up, I wasn't going to do it again on camera, so I just made another one. Took me took me no time at all off the camera, um, you know, and because it was fresh in my mind, it uh, all happened really quickly. I didn't I didn't detail the front panel again, um, and the uh, the work under the grill come come out nice this time. Gave it a really nice antique finish. Um, nice colour stain, did the edges, burnished the edges off quite nicely and it all came good in the end you know. I quite like putting the stain on with a rag, it gives it a bit of a streaky look. I know a lot of people will think that it's just a crap job but actually I quite like that appearance you know. Looks like it belongs to a cowboy or something. There we go, the finished sheath and a knife. Pucker ducker. I'm gonna take this knife on holiday. I'm going off on holiday. Um, uh, I might might take you lads along on my holiday. Um, it'll be a fun trip, but that's what this is for. Preparation for um, my holiday. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please consider liking. That actually is a real help if you do like. Just like whatever, whatever you think of the video, like it. Subscribe, and I'll see you later, guys. Thanks. Bye bye.